Welcome back again, in Anime Galaxy. Everybody thought he was just a lowly F-ranked adventurer, but he stumbled upon a damn golden servant card that summons a badass SS-ranked goddess, and with her help, he's about to become the strongest of them all. Kai this young dude, decides he gonna be an adventurer, chasing that golden glory, but damn luck ain't been on his side. He has been hustling his ass off every damn day for the past two years, but he is still stuck on the damn first floor of the dungeon. Just like any other day, Kai heads to the caves, moving slow as hell towards a slime on the ground. But instead of grabbing a sword or a knife like the regular folks, he whips out some insecticide and straight up sprays two bottles at that slime, watching it wither away and die. He is feeling pumped about how damn good he got at slaying the slimes. Ain't no surprise though because this here is his 999th slime kill. Dude has been grinding in the dungeons like an NPC swearing to hit that 1000 slimes mark. Kai keeps pushing deeper into that dungeon, when all of a sudden, he spots a golden slime chilling on a pillar. He getting all hyped about his luck finding such a rare spawn for his 1000th kill. But damn this one ain't gonna be a piece of cake. As he tries to spray it with his bottle, that slime straight up jumps off the pillar, like it ain't no big deal. But Kai ain't letting that discourage him, so he grabs a new powerful spray gun filled with pesticide and blasts that slime, taking it down for good. He's celebrating his damn 1000th kill, feeling like a champ. He can't wait to check his stats, thinking he is about to level up big time. But his level ain't changed, even though he just wasted a golden slime. He decides to brush it off, hoping at least for some dope loot. But instead of a regular mana core, he finds this little golden card with a girl drawn on it. At first he all confused, but soon enough he figures it out. This here be a servant card, some super rare item. He checks out the stats and learns that this servant is a Valkyrie named Sylphie. And he even tries to search her on Instagram, but damn there ain't no info about her online. Kai decides to bounce out of that dungeon first, before doing any more research. He starts heading back, and as he passing by, he sees this crew of adventurers walking past him, wearing some sick-ass armor, which Kai can only look at with jealousy. He wonders whether he would ever be able to buy such a thing, and heads over to the reception to get money in exchange for the slime cores. The receptionist Hitsugaya hooks my dude Kai up with 500 yen per slime core. So he ends up with a solid 1500 yen in total. It's a bit of a letdown, but Kai takes it and starts bouncing. But he suddenly stops and asks Hitsugaya if she knows the value of a rare servant card, especially if it's from the divine class. Hitsugaya takes a minute to think and straight up claims that a card like that would be hella collectible, worth over a billion yen without breaking a sweat. Kai's mind is blown, but he keeps his trap shut, heads back to his locker, tosses his stuff in there, changes into his regular clothes, and dips out of the place. Turns out, that dungeon is part of some amusement park joint, where folks can get memberships and go in to hunt for valuable shit. We then see little kids walking around in costumes, talking about how they gonna be explorers when they grow up. But Kai was lost in his own thoughts, still tripping on that damn card. Then while he is waiting for the train, he bumps into his two homies Shinji and Hayato, and they all hop on that train together. Kai tells them he is still stuck at level 3, and asks why the hell they ain't exploring dungeons. Hayato comes back with a reply, saying that two years ago, when they just started exploring the dungeons, they hit the second floor and ran into a goblin. They thought they could take that sucker down easy, but that goblin straight up hooped all their asses on his own. Ever since then, both Shinji and Hayato decided dungeons ain't their thing, and they happier checking out the other attractions with their passes. Later that night, Kai gets off the train and starts walking back home. He has dinner with his family, takes a bath, and crashes out. The next morning, he's still wondering if he should sell that card or not, as 1 billion yen can get him all the armor he wants, and he can buy as many video games as he wants. But then he gets interrupted by a voice, and it's his girl Katsu, asking where he was last night. My man decides to straight up lie and claims he was at a party with Shinji and Hayato. But shit both of them spot Kai and roll up on him. Kai quickly pulls them aside and begs them not to spill to Katsu about him going dungeon crawling yesterday, and they agree to keep it on the down low. But when Katsu asks them what they did at the party, they end up saying different shit like playing arcade games, doing karaoke, and going bowling. Katsu ain't no fool though. He peeped the lies and asks if Kai hit the dungeons once again. But my dude manages to lie through his teeth and barely escapes the heat. Later that day in school, my dude Kai hits up his friends and asks what they would do with a servant card. No hesitation, they straight up say they'd sell that shit because it's worth a lot, and you can't summon a servant outside the dungeons anyways. Kai starts thinking about whether he should cash in on the item, but when he heads to the dungeons later, he decides to keep it for himself. Homeboy wants to become one of the topest adventurers the world has ever seen. He lays low, making sure no cameras catch him, and whips out the card. He calls out Sylphie the Valkyrie to be his servant ready to follow his every command. 
Then all of a sudden, that card starts glowing and a bright ass light shoots out of it. Next thing you know, it transforms into a massive woman with wings on her back and two melons up front. She's on some otherworldly shit as she grabs Kai and straight up disappears. Kai's dumbfounded, trying to figure out what the hell just went down. Then he turns around and sees a little lowly in armor standing right next to him. He asks who she is, and wonders if any kids got lost here, but this mini girl hits him back, saying she's the Valkyrie Sylphie, his servant from now on. All of Kai's dreams of being a badass adventurer shatter in an instant. He drops to the floor, regretting the fact that he didn't sell that damn card, but he pulls himself together and gets back up. He tells Sylphie they gotta hunt some slimes. She immediately claims that she can sense one nearby, so Kai decides to test her intuition and tells her to lead him to the monster. Sylphie easily finds the slime, so Kai asks if she can kill it for him. She's down as hell and steps out into the open. Kai didn't expect much from this lil girl, but damn Sylphie conjures this lightning attack so powerful that for a hot second, Kai thinks the whole damn cave's gonna collapse. Kai walks up to her, asking if she's good, but she starts blushing and admits she's hungry as hell, needing some food. Kai looks at her and remembers that servants eat mana cores, so he feeds her the mana core from the slime, and she gives him some thanks before saying there's more slimes nearby. He asks if she's got her strength back, and she nods ready to roll out. But hold up, Kai stops her and asks if she can only detect slimes. Sylphie straight up claims she can sense all kinds of monsters, not just slimes. But after every battle, she gets hungry and needs to chow down on a mana core. Kai does the math and realizes this slime hunting gig ain't gonna cut it. He won't be raking in any cash like this. So he comes up with a plan and tells Sylphie to track down the slimes for him, and she's all down for it. Then he goes ham with his spray bottles, taking those slimes out one by one. It's the smartest move because finding those slimes is a pain in the ass. But this way, he can cut straight to the chase and blast them with his cheap insecticide sprays. After taking out a bunch of them, he levels up to level 4 and unlocks a new passive skill called Slime Slayer. That shit gives him a 50% boost in stats when he's fighting against slimes. He seems kinda let down by his new skill, but Sylphie boosts his morale, saying that getting a skill is an achievement in itself. He looks at her, smiles, and thanks her for the help. Then he says that he will be returning home now as it's getting late. Sylphie looks at him and asks if he'll summon her again soon, and he promises to summon her as soon as possible. So he recalls her back into the servant card and starts making his way back. He stops by the reception to sell the mana cores, and Hitsugaya is straight up shocked as she claims that he beat the daily slime extermination record by a large margin and asks how he did it. Kai plays it cool and lies, saying it was all luck. He snags his 15,000 yen reward and bounces home. Later that night, he's thinking about moving on to the second level of the dungeon. Goblins might be scary, but he's confident that with Sylphie by his side, they don't stand a chance. He has this dream about when he was a kid, watching TV with his girl Katsu. They were watching an interview about Katsu's dad the most famous adventurer. That interview fills Kai with awe, and he decides right then and there to follow in his footsteps and become an adventurer himself. The next morning, he wakes up with a newfound determination and confidence. He gears up with Sylphie by his side and the sword and shield he bought with his hard-earned money. He's got his mind set on clearing every damn dungeon and becoming the most legendary adventurer in the whole damn world. They step into the cave and start walking when Sylphie peeps that something ain't right. She asks Kai if he good because dude looking pale as a ghost and shaking like crazy. Kai is straight up scared of this cave but lies to Sylphie, talking about how he is just hella excited. But the moment Sylphie mentions she can sense a goblin nearby, by, Kai flips the switch and starts hauling ass. Sylphie is confused as hell, asking what the hell he doing, but Kai lies straight to her face, saying he has some urgent business back home. Then it hits him, he remembers Katsu's pops doing an interview on TV. He realizes he can't just give up on his dreams like that, so he grabs his wooden sword and tells Sylphie to lead the way. They find the goblin snoozing behind a massive rock, but Kai is too scared to do shit. He asks Sylphie if she can handle killing it. She's down as hell and steps up to cast her spell. The goblin wakes up, ready to throw hands, but Kai jumps in between them with his sword in his hand and tells Sylphie he changed his mind, but he tells her to be ready to back him up. Kai charges at the goblin, swinging his sword, but he misses and the goblin backs off. This time, the goblin comes at him, trying to knock him to the ground, but Kai blocks the hit with his shield at the last second. They go back and forth, struggling it out, but Kai starts gaining ground. He shoves the goblin away, and it falls to the ground. Kai sees his chance and goes in for the kill with his sword, but damn the goblin blocks the strike, grabs the sword, and disarms Kai. Then that goblin jumps at him, ready to end it all. Kai falls back without any defenses, but he remembers he got the sprays. He whips them out real quick and sprays that shit in the goblin's eyes. The goblin gets blinded by it, and that's when Kai takes the opportunity to land the final blow. He grabs his sword, rushing at the goblin, 
but Dammy trips over a damn rock and falls to the floor accidentally stabbing that goblin right in the chest, taking it out instantly. Sylphie is all happy congratulating Kai, but my dude is still scared as hell. He grabs the mana crystal, feeling thankful to be alive. Suddenly, a golden glow surrounds him, and he realizes he leveled up once again. He checks his stats, and he got a new skill called the Goblin Slayer. He got mixed feelings about that shitty skill, but he decides a skill is a skill, and keeps it moving. They are going deeper into the damn cave when another goblin straight up attacks them. But Sylphie is holding it down with her defensive barrier, blocking all the attacks like a boss, while Kai is slicing that monster with perfect timing and taking it out. Kai then goes and kills his third goblin by blinding it with that spray bottle once again then finishing it off, while Sylphie is dragging his ass to face another goblin. Kai kills that goblin too with a head strike, and in the process he ranks up to level 6. They keep on walking, and Kai asks Sylphie if she knows anything about these dungeons, but Sylphie replies that she has no idea, and all she knows is that her sole purpose is to help her master. They keep moving deeper, and they find the final goblin of the day. That sucker attacks Kai, but Sylphie unleashes her lightning magic and straight up destroys that beast. Kai feeds her the mana core, and they bounce outside. Kai hands over the mana crystals to Hitsugaya. Once again, he lying his ass off, saying it was all just a fluke. Then he heads back home, and damn his body is so damn sore he can't even move from his bed. Next morning, he dragging his lazy ass to school with Katsu. Katsu peeping the situation, knowing Kai must have hit the dungeons, but Kai straight up denies it claiming he was just doing some gym bodybuilding. Katsu let it slide and they keep on walking. They finally make it to their classroom, and Kai starts spilling to Shinji and Hayato about his new adventures in the level 2 dungeons. He tells them how he straight up killed 4 goblins. They are damn surprised, having a hard time believing Kai ain't talking smack, but he promises them he ain't lying and says he going even deeper today. After school, he heads back to the dungeons with Sylphie. They start exploring the distant parts of the cave, taking out goblins with some sick teamwork. Sylphie blocking the attacks while Kai lands the killing blow. And when Kai gets tired, Sylphie steps up and finishes off the monsters with her lightning magic. After that adventure, Kai sleeps like a log at night. The next day, he upgrades to a metal rod, dealing some serious damage to the goblins. But he is so damn exhausted that he ends up snoozing even in the classroom. But that ain't stopping him from his adventures. He is hitting the dungeon day after day, taking out goblins by any means necessary till he hits level 10, which is a major milestone for him. This time he unlocks a special skill called Divine Love, boosting his stats with every level up. The power of that boost be depending on how much love and care the Divine Goddess is showing him, so he decides he gotta confess how stoked he is to be adventuring with someone as cool as Sylphie. But damn this poor lowly doesn't even know what kind of psycho manipulator this guy is, so she just happily thanks him for being there and loves working with him. After that, the next monster they run into is a glowing skeleton, something they ain't faced before. Kai tells Sylphie to stay alert and she throws up her magic barrier as the skeletons come rushing at them. The skeleton is slamming against that barrier, trying to break through, but before he can do that Kai decides to attack, but damn his attack is doing nothing because his weapons ain't strong enough for this rare spawn. So he asks Sylphie to handle it, and she starts chanting her spell and blasts that skeleton with a lightning bolt, killing it instantly. This time the mana core that drops is bright red. Kai is wondering if it is rare, but he feeds it to Sylphie anyway, and she claims it is tastier than usual. Later that day, when he takes his loot to Hitsugaya, he asks about the mana core from that glowing skeleton. She tells him it is a pretty rare drop and could fetch around 2 million yen, so Kai is crushed. He coulda have been a millionaire, but Sylphie done ate his money. Hitsugaya tells him not to worry though, because if he encountered it once, there's a good chance he'll come across it again. That night, he is thinking about the money he lost, but he decides it doesn't matter because he's still leveled up like crazy. He starts wondering if he can move on to the third floor now, but he knows on that floor, the enemies come in groups and can be way more dangerous, so he decides to keep that in mind and stay prepared. The next day, he tells Sylphie that he wants her to just watch for a while without doing anything else. She gets scared, thinking she did something wrong and apologizes, but Kai explains that he wants to go to the third floor, but he's scared he'll rely too much on her to save his ass, so he wants to get stronger first. Sylphie seems relieved and wishes him good luck. And then out of nowhere, a damn goblin pops up from behind a rock. Kai confidently tells Sylphie to watch from the back as he handles it. But the plan backfires big time, and he ends up getting messed up real bad. He gotta buy potions from Hitsugaya, and that blows away all his damn savings. That night, he thinks about how he needs a bunch of mana cores to feed Sylphie and get better gear. 
So he decides to start from scratch and heads back to the first floor to kill as many slimes as possible, gaining skills, levels, and mana cores. After hustling his ass off in the dungeons alone for several days, he finally collects enough mana cores to feel confident moving on to the third floor. But before they can leave the cave, Sylphie says she can sense a different kind of slime. And damn she is right because Kai spots a silver slime nearby. He jumps into action, rushing that slime with his spray gun, but that sucker is fast and dodges away. But luckily Sylphie is right there ready to go. She unleashes her lightning magic and straight up kills that slime. And here's the crazy part, that slime drops another servant card, and that is some insane luck. Kai picks up the card and sees it's a demon rank card for a servant named Luceria. He looks at Sylphie, and she looking upset, which makes him realize that demons and goddesses don't mix well. But even with that, he decides to follow his own desires and without even talking to Sylphie about it, he summons the demon servant right then and there. A huge red flame surrounds them, and a massive demon lady emerges, flying straight through Kai in her ethereal form, just like what happened with Sylphie. He looks down and sees another lowly, but this time she got bat wings and horns on her head, and he realizes with a demon and a goddess on his side, his party gonna be unstoppable. He is straight up crushed when he peeped that shorty ain't looking anything like the fine girl on the card. Anyways, they do the intro thing and swap names, then Shorty thinks Kai ain't reliable or smart, and Sylphie is not happy to see her dissing their master like that. Lyseria tells her not to worry about the foul mouth because all demons are talking like that, and Sylphie is cool with it if that's the deal. Then Lyseria asks Kai about Sylphie and notices she looks like a Valkyrie. Sylphie tells her she is Kai's servant just like her, and she is down to work together. Lyseria feels the same and asks Kai for some mana core because she is hungry, but he shuts her down saying she ain't done shit yet. Then Sylphie spots a slime nearby, and Lyseria steps in all smug to handle it. She busts out a crazy strong move called Hellfire of Destruction and wipes that slime out. And Kai feeds her the core after she demands it. But one ain't enough for her, and she asks for more. Kai tells her he ain't got any, and she thinks he a cheap ass for it. Then he asks her to show off her other move called Corrosive Breath. Shorty ain't thrilled about working more because he ain't given her more magic cores, but he promises to give her some later. After that, she uses corrosive breath to take out a goblin, and that shit practically melts the poor thing, and Sylphie and Kai can't even watch because it's too nasty. Kai hands her the mana core, and Lyseria likes the taste of this one better, so she suggests they should explore the lower floors for more tasty cores from stronger monsters. But Kai stops her, saying there's more monsters on the third floor. Lyseria doesn't see a problem with that, and Kai lets her know they gotta secure new weapons and supplies before they head down. He asks if she knows this dungeon, and since she is not, she agrees to listen to him. He says they'll hit up the third floor tomorrow because she might be tired today. She ain't feeling tired, but she agrees to listen to him after Sylphie tells her she should listen to her master. The next day, the three of them head down to the third floor, and we see that Kai has bought a crossbow as his new weapon. Sylphie thinks the weapon fits him real good, and Kai tells her that the crossbow was mad expensive, but Lucerius says the price doesn't matter. Then they spot two hellhounds, and Kai takes aim, but he misses the shot. The hellhounds try to attack him, but Sylphie puts up a barrier and saves his ass. Then Lucerius wipes them out with Hellfire of Destruction, and Kai feeds her a core, but she ain't satisfied and wants another one. But Kai shuts her down because he won't have any left if she keeps munching them all. She ain't too thrilled about that, but Kai says he'll give her an extra core if she takes down more monsters, and he promises her that. She warns him that she'll send him to hell if he breaks that promise, and that freaks him out a bit. Then they come across two wild boars. Luceria uses Hellfire of Destruction again, but only one of them gets roasted, and the other one still charges at them. She tries to hit it with another attack, but Kai stops her so he can shoot it, but one shot ain't enough to kill the beast, so that startles Kai and he falls. Sylphie tries to help with her divine lightning, but before she can, he finishes off the monster with another shot. Sylphie praises Kai for that, but Lyseria thinks he acted like a wimp. Kai notices he leveled up to level 11, and Lyseria asks him for more magic cores. Later, we see Kai leaving the place, thinking he ain't gonna make any profit if he keeps feeding all the cores to the servants. On his way out, he hears a group of adventurers talking, and he finds out that those three girls can make it to the sixth floor without any problems. The scene cuts to Kai daydreaming in class, thinking they can make it to the sixth floor too if they hustle. He's all happy thinking about exploring deeper into the dungeon when his classmates wake him up. They wonder how he can be so carefree because they ain't got enough points to get into their dream schools. They find out he chills because he still ain't decided which school he gonna choose. 
Katsu overhears them and asks Kai which school he gonna pick. But he ain't sure what to say, so he asks her first. She says she going to Wuka Academy and wonders if he gonna enroll there too. Since he ain't made a choice, he tells her he will. She's hyped that they gonna roll to school together again, and she dips when one of her homies asks her to help with the handouts. Kai is wondering what she is so happy about, and his crew thinks he is too oblivious for his own good. Then it cuts to him back in the labyrinth, and his peeps are straight up slaying all the monsters one by one. Unlike Sylphie, Lyseria is asking Kai for more cores, and he ain't got no choice but to listen to her. Sylphie ain't too thrilled about this, but Kai doesn't catch on to what she feeling. He keeps hooking up Lyseria with more cores, and when Sylphie looks at him, he asks if something ain't right, but she doesn't speak up. He knows something is off with her, but he can't figure out what. Then we see him back at his house. He notices his mom watching some drama on TV, and he sees a similar situation going down there like the one he dealing with now. Watching the drama, he figures Sylphie is probably anxious because of the new servant, and he's scared it gonna lead to a face-off between his two servants, just like in the drama. He thinks that would be messed up, and he wondering how he can fix this. The next morning, he runs into Katsu on his way to school, and she peeps that he looking hella tired. After chatting with him, she finds out he didn't get no sleep last night. She asks if he has some trouble and offers to help if she can. He tries to spill the truth, but he decides not to, and he tells her that his two friends done made friends with two girls who got totally different personalities, and the quiet one ain't feeling the one with the attitude. They all trying to figure out how to make them get along, and that kept him thinking all night. Katsu asks if he talked to the quiet girl about it, and she suggests he should ask the person directly. Afterwards, we see Kai only summon Sylphie in the dungeon this time, so she asks about Lyseria. He tells her he wants the two of them to talk alone. This makes Sylphie blush, but she ain't too thrilled about him wanna talk about Lyseria. He asks if she doesn't dig her, and Sylphie tells him that ain't true. At first, she did think Lyseria was kinda scary, but now she knows the demon didn't mean no harm. She just a nice and kind girl, and she loves her. Kai straight up asks her if she got any damn problems at all, and she informs him that she doesn't, but he keeps pushing her to come clean. He tells her she is important to him, and that straight up flusters Sylphie. So since he won't let it go, she finally spills and tells him there's one thing that's been on her mind. She explains that her master is way too nice to Lucyria, and she wants him to treat her the same damn way. Kai looks all confused because he doesn't think he has been treating them differently, but Sylphie lets him know Lyseria has been getting more cores recently. She mentions she used to be able to talk to him more before Lyseria showed up, and she wants him to talk to her like they used to. Kai finally catches on that she's straight up jealous, so he agrees to give her as many cores as Lyseria and talk to her more from now on, and Sylphie is hella happy to hear that. Later on, we peep Kai already starting to feed both girls the same damn number of cores. He's also giving props to Sylphie for her killer attack on the monster they just faced. Then Lyseria wants him to praise her too and he does it, and that makes her act all smug. The three of them then run into a wild boar, and Sylphie just straight up takes it out, leveling up in the process. Kai peeped that all her stats had shot up by a lot, so she's all happy about it, and Lyseria congrats her too. Then they come across three hellhounds, and Sylphie wipes them all out with one damn attack. Kai is straight up surprised that she can take out three of them at once now. Then they go up against another wild boar, and Sylphie defends everyone with a barrier. Kai notices that her barriers are also more durable now, then Lyseria tries to attack the boar, but Kai shuts her down and handles it on his own. He feeds Sylphie some more cores, and Lyseria ain't too happy she ain't get to do nothing. Sylphie then asks him something in a soft voice, but he can't hear her. He asks her to speak up, and she embarrassingly asks him to give her some more cores. Later on, he realizes that leveling up also made her appetite bigger than before, then he trades his cores for cash. Hits a guy a peeping that he has been bringing fewer cores lately, and he ain't too thrilled about it. The next day, we peep him straight up slaying slimes on the first level of the dungeon. Turns out he done killed 25 of them already. Sylphie giving him props for that, but Lyseria ain't happy because she ain't getting to throw down. Kai tells her he can't be saving up the mana cores if she fighting alongside him. She wonders why he summoned her if that's the case, but Sylphie tells her she is just happy to be supporting her master like this. Kai appreciates their support, and that makes Lyseria happy too. But she ain't being too honest with her feelings, so she quietly says she gonna keep supporting him. After that, he sells the slime cores, and Hitsugaya asks him if something is wrong with him, because he has been only bringing slime cores lately. Kai says he just felt like going back to the first floor for a bit. Hitsugaya can't wrap her head around that, because he should be ready for the fourth floor by now. Then we see Kaido hitting up the internet looking for some sick gear. He might be physically ready for the fourth floor, 
but his equipment ain't up to the task. He thinking about getting fresh armor, and he found a dope suit made of carbon monotubes, but that shit hella expensive and out of his budget, so he realizes he gotta make some more cash. The scene switches back to him in the dungeon. He comes across a blue metallic slime, and he thinks that this must be thanks to his god blessing skill, so he expects to get a servant card as a drop. Then Lyseria and Sylphie surround the slime, and the two of them straight up attack it together. That slime ain't standing a chance after that, but Kai noticed it drop a magic orb instead of a servant card. He explains that using this orb, he can master a spell and become a wizard, so he smacks it on the ground to use it. That gives him a new skill called Waterball, and he is hella excited to try it out and he spots a hellhound to test it on. He straight up tells Sylphie to throw up her barrier and defend all of them. Then he orders Lyseria to take out the monster if he misses. Sylphie puts up the barrier, and he hits the hellhound with the water ball, but that shit doesn't do any damage to the monster, so Lyseria steps in and wipes it out before it can attack them. Kai feels all disappointed seeing how useless his magic is. Sylphie trying to lift his spirits, saying it's still damn amazing that he can even use magic. Lucyria chimes in, saying at least he won't have to worry about drinking water anymore, but Kai thinks he should've just sold the magic orb instead. At night, we peep a downcast Kai chilling in the park, and Katsu rolls up on him. She asks what he doing there at this hour, and he almost spills about his new magic skill. But he switches it up and starts talking about some whack movie that just dropped and how it was a letdown when he and his homie went to peep it. They head home together, and Kai finds out Katsu was coming from her cram school just now. He thanked her for the advice she gave him the other day because it helped him solve his problem. She wonders if the situation was about him instead of his friends, but he tells her it wasn't, and she bounces to her house. Kai start thinking if she was pissed at him just now, and we see that Katsu has noticed that he hiding something. Kai wonders if she is jealous like Sylphie, and even though he is right, he thinks this can't be possible. The next day, Kai heads back to the dungeon to work on his waterball spell. He starts off slow, shooting a waterball at the wall, but it ain't doing much except getting the wall wet. Kai is already tired as hell from just one spell, but he keeps training. On his second try, he blasts that waterball as fast as he can, and both he and Sylphie are stoked about it, but Lucyria ain't impressed. Because after just two waterballs, Kai is completely drained and collapses on the ground. He heads back home and knocks out as soon as he hits the bed. In his dreams, Kai remembers watching Katsu's dad on TV when he was a kid, and how that made him dream of being an adventurer like him. All motivated by that dream, he hits the dungeon the next day and starts hustling on his waterball strikes again. He's gotten hella faster today and shoots a bunch of water balls at the dungeon walls. But eventually, he runs out of mana. He takes a quick break to catch his breath, but as soon as he's feeling better, he jumps right back into training. This time, he starts playing around with the shape of the water ball and turns it into a cube. He's thrilled with the success and keeps experimenting, giving different shapes to the water ball. But then he gets worn out real quick and falls on his back. As he's mindlessly walking out of the dungeon, he trips and falls right into the arms of another adventurer. He quickly gets up and apologizes, but this mature hot adventurer asks if he's alright. Kai says that he is good and leaves, but this mommy's concerned because he ain't looking too well. Her crew though, they're impressed by his hustle and heads into the dungeon. Later, Kai is knocking out in class, and when the teacher wakes him up, he straight up shouts that he's gonna give it his all in training today, and the whole class starts cracking up. During break, his friends come up to him and ask what he was talking about with the training stuff. Kai tells them he's practicing a crucial skill for his dungeon success, but just then Katsu shows up. She asks if he's training for the dungeon, but Kai switches it up and says he's talking about dance practice. Katsu's relieved and tells him not to overdo it. Then she says she wants to see his dance performance someday and leave, leaving Kai and the boys alone. The next day, Kai heads back to the dungeon for some real combat action with his water ball. He shoots a goblin with it, but instead of popping like usual, the water ball stays solid and clogs up all the goblin's airways, suffocating the poor sucker to death. Sylphie and Lyseria give him props for it, but then Kai realizes that he ain't getting any more experience points from the monsters on the third floor. That means it's time for them to level up and head down to the fourth floor. Kai figures he needs some dope gear if he's gonna tackle the fourth floor, so he decides to finally cop something that's been on his wish list for a while. The next day, he rolls up wearing a tight-ass bodysuit. Sylphie thinks he's rocking it, but Lyseria straight up shatters his ego by calling him lame. Kai tells her the suit is high-end and pricey because it's made of carbon nanotubes that protect him from mad damage while still being thin and light. He explains how the suit's got top-notch defense against arrows and other piercing attacks, and he's got a magic amplifying bracelet that'll make even his weak spells hit a bit harder. But he hasn't tested it out yet because there ain't no option for that. Kai starts showing off other stuff he bought, like a potion, 
but Lyseria drags Sylphie away because she's bored with Kai's display, they eventually make their way to the fourth floor, where Sylphie senses a big-ass creepy monster coming their way. Before Kai can check the monster encyclopedia to see what they're up against, a freaking giant cockroach shows up, and both girls freak out and cling to each other. They start blasting magic spells like crazy at the roach monster while hauling ass through the dungeon, and Kai's just trying to keep up because he doesn't want to be left alone. After they exhaust themselves, Sylphie and Lyseria take a breather and almost attack Kai when he comes running up to them. Sylphie runs over and hugs him, saying she was scared shitless, but Lyseria is still playing her cold act and claiming she ain't scared of no measly bugs. Sylphie then apologizes to Kai for leaving him behind and begs him to scold her. He tells her he ain't mad because they cleared the fourth floor in record time with their wild rampage and he's collected a lot of mana cores from all the defeated monsters. Lucyria refuses to eat the nasty bug crystals, but she's too hungry to turn them down. Turns out, the crystals taste just as awful as the girls expected. Then Kai says that since they got some crystals, they should scout on the fifth floor for some time. Selfie's got that sixth sense and senses a sand monster and a mud monster nearby. Kai takes aim with his crossbow, but his first arrow misses, and the second one goes right through the sand monster, who immediately retaliates and attacks him. Kai shouts out Sylphie's name, and she's quick on her feet, throwing up a barrier to protect him. Kai figures these two monsters are immune to physical attacks, so he turns to Lucyria for backup, and she straight up obliterates them with her fiery attack. Kai asks if she needs to recharge her mana with the nasty crystals, but neither Lucyria nor Sylphie want to touch that disgusting stuff. They keep exploring the fifth floor, but it seems like there ain't no more monsters nearby. Just then, Sylphie spots something weird on a wall, but Kai ain't seeing anything special about it. Sylphie decides to go all out and blast a hole in the wall with her lightning attack, and Dammit opens up a secret passageway. They start heading in, and Kai warns the girls to watch out for any traps. But just as he was saying this, Lucyria tells him that it's too late for the warning. She steps right on a trap trigger, and an arrow gets shot out. But instead of hitting Lucyria, it nails Kai, and he's on the ground writhing in pain. His crew's all worried, but thankfully, his bodysuit protects him from any serious damage, so he bounces back in a few minutes. They keep moving forward, but then Lucyria steps right on another trap tile. This time, Kai steps back to avoid the arrow, but he gets zapped by lightning instead. Surprisingly though he's totally fine and feels a bit energized. Lucyria tells him to stop making her worry, but when he asks if she was actually worried about him, she's all sundered and defaults to her usual mode. Eventually, they come across a massive gate with a badass painting on it, and Sylphie senses a crazy strong presence on the other side. Kai's ready to call it a day and head home, but the two girls ain't letting him off the hook that easily. He tries opening the gate, but that thing ain't budging. So Sylphie just unleashes her lightning attack on it, and Kai is sincerely hoping he won't get charged with destruction of dungeon property. They step inside and come face to face with two badass monsters. One's a red ogre, and the other's a massive slime. Kai ain't backing down now that they've come this far, so he tells his girls to focus on taking down the red ogre first. They unleash their lightning and fire attacks, but that ogre barely even flinches because it's immune to skill damage. But then the ogre charges at them, but Sylphie's barrier skill blocks its attack. Kai tells Lyseria to handle the slime while he takes shots at the red ogre with his crossbow. Each arrow he fires chips away at the ogre's health, but then he runs out of arrows. The pissed off ogre starts pounding the barrier, and meanwhile, Lyseria is struggling to deal with the giant slime on her own. As a last resort, Kai decides to rely on his water ball. He conjures up a water ball, but it freezes because of the bracelet's effect. He shoots the ice ball at the red ogre, slowly wearing down its health. But then he realizes his mana's running low. So Kai gets crafty and shapes his ice balls into sharp icicles that pack a bigger punch against the red ogre. With the final three shots in his arsenal, Kai brings down the red ogre, and now it's just the slime left. The slime's about to smack Lyseria, but Kai jumps in and defends her with his shield. He holds the slime back and tells Sylphie to get ready for her divine spear attack. But damn his shield and gear start melting. Then Sylphie charges at the slime with her divine spear and pierces right through it, but even then though, it doesn't do much damage to the monster. Kai's ready to throw in the towel, but then he remembers his hero and charges forward, dodging the slime's attacks. And then he pulls out his trusty bug spray because giant or not, that monster's still a slime. The slime's health keeps dropping, and Sylphie protects Kai with her magic barrier. Kai runs out of the first two bottles, so he digs into his bag and whips out two extra strong bug sprays. He unleashes them all on the slime, and finally, the slime's health hits zero and it bites the dust. The girls all excitedly hug Kai, but they end up hurting his injured shoulder. No worries though because he fixes it up by chugging a health potion. Right after that, Lyseria levels up, and then Kai checks out his stats to find that he's also leveled up a whole lot too. He wastes no time and starts gathering mana cores. He stumbles upon the red core of the ogre, 
which he knows will fetch a pretty penny. When he goes looking for the slime's core, instead he comes across a rare grade magic sword. But the thing looks more like a steak knife than a magic sword. Later on, Kai takes the red ogre's mana core to Hitsugaya, who's all curious about where he found it. He tells her about the hidden dungeon on the fifth floor and how he kicked the boss's ass. Hitsugaya says they gotta check the dungeon out fast, and lets Kai in on the fact that the red mana core is worth a whole lot of cash. Kai's stoked to hear that news, and with another good news, Hitsugaya invites him to join an event next week where they'll be taking on the seventh floor as a group. The following week, Kai heads to the event and bumps into the three girls from the other day. Their leader Eri, introduces herself, and the pink cat girl goes by Miko, while the last one is Hikari. Kai introduces himself, and he finds out that they all will be on the same team. Meanwhile, Katsu has this dream about the past, where she sees her dad heading off to the dungeon. She asks him to come back as soon as he can, and he promises her that he will come home early so they can have dinner together. He then heads out, and that's when Katsu wakes up. She decides to go to her friend's place to study. As she steps out of the house, she starts wondering if Kai is busy with dance practice or muscle training today. We then cut to the scene where all the event participants are lining up to get teleported. Kai's crew is holding hands, standing in the teleport circle, and then boom, they're on the sixth floor. Kai's super relieved they arrived safely. He tells the others that it's only his second time using the gate, so he was pretty nervous. He explains the first time he used it was when he traveled from the sixth floor to the ground yesterday. He finds out that it's the same for them, and they are nervous as well. They soon come across a staff member who guides them to the stairs leading to the seventh floor. The staff member informs them that today's event is scheduled to last for three hours. As they near the stairs, they notice a convenience store. Eri asks Kai if he wants to buy anything. So Kai thinks it's super convenient to have a store in the dungeon and decides to grab some refills for his pesticide spray. His teammates notice he's carrying a lot of luggage, but Kai thinks it's strange that they're traveling so light, and they explain it's because they have magic bags. Kai is shocked because magic bags cost as much as a mansion. They tell him their parents bought the bags for them, and Kai realizes that they all come from wealthy families. Eri then asks Kai if he's got the proper equipment with him. Embarrassed, he admits that he started with small things and is slowly working his way up, buying everything with the money he made from selling magic cores. Miko points out that he's only wearing a tight suit, and Hikari scolds her, saying it's not nice to be so blunt. They all then gear up and head to the seventh floor. As they explore the floor, they talk and Kai finds out that mostly golem-type monsters appear on this level. Hearing this, he realizes that his teammates must have done some recon on this floor, so they explain that scouting the area is essential for winning any game. Kai agrees but also knows that this is much more serious than just a game. Suddenly, they notice some shadows approaching them and quickly put up their guard. However, they soon realize that it's only the staff members who are cleaning the dungeon. The staff members tell them to do their best in the event and then move on. Kai tells everyone that he is at level 16 and wonders what levels they are at. Eri responds, I'm at level 18, and Hikari and Miko both say they are at level 15. Miko also mentions that Hikari has an MP of 75, which surprises Kai since he only has half of that, so he thinks she is amazing. They then come across a stone golem. Eri orders Hikari to get ready to use her magic and tells Miko to protect Hikari while she fights the golem. Kai asks what he should do, and Eri tells him to watch her back. Eri attacks the golem and manages to defeat it all on her own, and Kai finds this impressive. They then encounter a bronze golem, so Hikari uses a spell called Earthwave to trap it in a swamp, and Miko summons her servant Snatch, who dodges the golem's attacks and lands a wind spell on it. Hikari then uses a fireball spell on the monster, and Eri finishes it off with her spear. Kai is amazed by their teamwork. Then he notices a monster behind Miko and Hikari, so they turn around to see an iron golem. Kai attacks it with his crossbow, but it has no effect. Eri stops the monster from attacking Miko and Hikari, but the golem's skin is too tough for her attack to deal any real damage. Hikari uses her fireball on the monster, and Miko attacks it with Snatch, but neither of their attacks have any effect and the monster injures Snatch. Seeing this, Kai thinks he needs to summon either Sylphie or Lyseria. But he drops the plate knife from his bag and remembers reading about this magic sword online. He learned that it can deal whatever damage the user imagines, so Kai decides he needs to imagine himself defeating the monster. He tells Hikari to use Earthwave to trap the monster. She does, and the monster is stuck. He then asks Eri to distract the monster, and she launches a barrage of attacks. Kai then attacks the monster from behind with the magic sword, imagining it blowing up, and the monster actually explodes. And the others notice that Kai has the magic sword balzard with him. Later, they are sitting in a cafe discussing their dungeon exploration. They talk about Kai's sword, 
and Kai explains that he got it as a drop item the other day and is glad it works since it was his first time using it. Kai asks Miko how Snatch is doing and is relieved to hear that he's alright. Kai mentions that it was his first time seeing a carbuncle and that he's never even seen one in a video before. Miko explains that servants can't be captured on camera, and Eri asks Kai if he has ever seen any of them on video. Kai realizes he hasn't, which explains why the guild officials never asked him about Sylphie and Luceria. He wonders if they are the only ones who know about Snatch. Miko clarifies that she picked Snatch up from an auction and registered him with the guild, so everyone knows about him. Miko suggests they should all put matching keychains on their magic pouches to commemorate participating in the event, and everyone agrees. Afterward Eri asks Kai to join their party as a permanent member, explaining that there are transfer gates on every five floors, and their current goal is to reach the transfer gate on the 11th floor. Kai likes the idea but insists that he's just an ordinary explorer and not as special as they are. They reassure him, saying they feel safer with him around. They ask if he has anyone else in mind for a party, reminding Kai of Sylphie and Luceria. Kai worries that if they find out he is bringing two little girls into the dungeon, he might get reported. He asks for some time to consider it. Miko wonders if he dislikes their party, but he assures her he needs to consult someone first and will give them an answer later. They understand, and Eri asks him to contact her once he's decided. He agrees, and the scene shifts to him returning to the dungeon. Inside, he summons his servants, who are upset that he didn't summon them earlier. Kai explains he's considering forming a party with others, but his servants are unhappy and can't believe it's the first thing he mentions after seeing them. He tells them he didn't abandon them, explaining he had business to handle and couldn't summon them in the morning. He tries to discuss the party again, but they insist that the three of them are fine as they are. Kai persists, but Sylphie firmly tells him to end the conversation here. Then Lasiria gets all mad at him for always calling her by her full name, and Kai's got no idea what else to call her. She points out he calls Sylphie by her nickname, Syl, so he realizes that this time, Lasiria is the one who's jealous. He suggests a few nicknames for her, but she likes Luce. She mentions that Kai will have to call her this from now on, and he agrees. The two of them then go ahead to explore the dungeon, and Kai states that they still haven't cleared up the party thing, but they ignore him. The next day, while going to school, Katsu asks Kai if he practiced dancing over the weekend or if he did muscle training, and Kai states that he's doing both. She is glad to hear this and asks him if he'd like to go out shopping with her next Saturday, and he shyly agrees. Katsu then notices one of her friends ahead and walks the rest of the way with her. Kai also encounters his friends on the way, and they have heard about the shopping trip, so they wonder if they're going on a date. Kai doesn't think that Katsu would be interested in going on a date with him, and his friends are disappointed at seeing how clueless he is. They then ask him about the event and wonder if he partnered with an old dude, but he informs them that he joined a party of three girls, one two years older than him, another the same age as him, and the last one a year younger. Hearing this, his friends wonder if the dungeon is a more fun place than they expected, and they think about heading back in there as well. The scene then cuts to Saturday, and Kai picks up Katsu from her home, and they head to the subway station. There, he notices a broadcast of the dungeon TV show. Watching it, we find that magic cores are valuable resources and can be traded for money. They still haven't figured out how to use them, but they are filled with an unknown energy that can be useful in the future. Seeing this, Katsu thinks that Kai is really interested in dungeons, and she tells him to forget about it for today and focus on their shopping trip, and he agrees. While walking around the town, Katsu wonders when was the last time the two of them went out like this. Kai then thinks back to when they were little and remembers her dad taking them to all sorts of places. Katsu recalls their camping trips and movie nights and suggests they should catch a movie next time, to which Kai agrees. They then hit the stores for some clothes shopping. Katsu tries on a few outfits, and Kai compliments every one of them. Finally, she asks which one he likes best, and he picks the one she's wearing. Afterward they head to the park, where Katsu spots some boats and suggests they go for a ride. As they paddle around, Katsu notices some beautiful fish in the water, but Kai thinks she's even more beautiful. He sees couples in the other boats and thinks they must look like a couple too, but then quickly dismisses the thought, reminding himself they're just hanging out. Katsu notices that Kai looks a bit more built than usual and figures his muscle training is paying off. Kai agrees, and she says they should have more outings like this. The scene then cuts to them sipping juice, both enjoying their flavors. Katsu asks if Kai wants to try her flavor, and Kai agrees, offering her a sip from his glass. After tasting her flavor, he thinks it's pretty good. Katsu hesitates for a moment, thinking of it as an indirect kiss, but then goes for it and likes it too. They head to the subway station and spot an advertisement about the dungeon. Katsu then sees a dad holding his daughter and tells Kai she wants to visit another place. She leads him to the dungeon theme park, and he wonders if she wants to go inside since the parade and fireworks are about to start. But she just asks if the dungeon building is inside the park, 
explaining that's where her dad is. We learn she had been dreaming about the last time she saw her dad, who promised to have dinner with her but never came home, and she questions why he even goes into the dungeon. Then she tells Kai that she had a great time today, and suggests that they head home now. Kai knows she's worried about her dad, but he is determined to prove that he can be a hero just like her dad. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to let the world know about our love for anime.